Hi, third grade teachers. My name is Catherine, and today I'm going to show you how to use the reading and analyzing nonfiction or RAN routine in the third grade passport to social studies curriculum. And I hope by the end of this video, you will understand the purpose behind the routine and get to see some sample lessons and how you can follow up after you've used the RAN strategy. So, what uh, state standards does the RAND strategy cover when you teach it in social studies? Well, it helps students recognize and use different forms of evidence to make meaning. And it really, it, you know, hones deeply on interpreting and using evidence uh, when looking at different sources. So you might not realize this, but your students have been using the RAND strategy since kindergarten. It just looked a little different. And you might think this looks really familiar. It looks kind of like a KWL chart. Well, it is in a lot of ways similar to a KWL chart. It just builds on it in a really um, nice and interesting way. So why might you wanna use this strategy? I'll tell you. The RAND strategy helps children activate their prior knowledge on a particular topic. It's a really systematic way to engage your students in evaluating their thinking. So it helps them to either confirm their ideas or it can challenge misconceptions that they may have. Another thing that I think is really fabulous um, and is a reason why I use the RAND strategy with my students is that it helps students have ownership over their research and their inferences. On top of that, it requires them to employ text evidence or evidence from other sources to back up their claims. Lastly, it's a really um, clear way to organize new information and wonderings that can help guide future exploration. So when might you use the RAND strategy? This um, strategy is great for the start of a lesson and you could, or a unit, you can do it either synchronously or asynchronously. Again, similar to how you might have used a KWL before. Um, it, a good time to use the RAND strategy is also when you know that students have some background knowledge or misconceptions and you wanna um, either engage their, uh, activate their, their background knowledge or start to challenge some of these uh, misconceptions. And the RAND strategy is also great as an assessment to determine what students might know about a topic, to see how they analyze a primary or secondary source, and to find out what questions they may have to guide further inquiry. And this strategy can be used like I said, synchronously or asynchronously within a unit with the goal of discovering new information from a text or when students are researching a topic. So I'd like to show you a sample lesson that uses kind of a modified version of the RAND strategy. So this is from the unit, um, it's, it's the case study of China. And the lesson objective is for students to begin the unit by analyzing images and build on their prior knowledge. So you start with children analyzing this image. This is an image of the Great Wall of China. Then you ask, why do they think this wall was built? And what's great about the RAND strategy is that you start with what children think. So it differentiates from what do you know is a fact and it becomes, what do you think is true? Next, you give them some new information. So here in, in still in the introduction model phase, you're telling children a little bit more about the Great Wall of China. Again, you're asking um, them to, to begin to think about what they know. And now we see a modified RAN. What I think I know, new information I've learned, additional questions or wondering. So on the um, actual RAN chart, there are a few other columns that you could use. One that says, um, yes, I was right, where students confirm if what they thought they knew was true. And kind of like an, oops, my miscon, you know, my idea wasn't exactly true. Um, but you also will have these three components, what I think I know, new information that I've learned, and additional questions and wonderings. Now, when I click, this is going to start to play, but you can save that for when you're teaching this lesson. <laughs> um, 
And lastly, again, in, in this particular lesson, you have children think, okay, what did I find out? And this also incorporates another fun activity that happens in this lesson. So um, once you've used the RAN strategy, what can you do next? Well, you should definitely make sure you refer back to it. The same way you would refer back to a KWL as um, a lesson or a unit continues. And you can use any information that children have confirmed to be true in a future project-based assessment. Um, I would also suggest, once you feel really comfortable using the RAND strategy, try out some different groupings. Maybe have children work with a partner or in a small group, or you can model it as a whole group, um, as you saw in the sample lesson. And lastly, you can push their thinking a little further by using this particular strategy to evaluate maybe an author bias from a particular text, um, to evaluate author's point of view and intent. There's really, you know, there are, there's some pretty exciting options. I'm gonna wrap this up by showing you what the chart looks like. So let's go over there together. So here is the RAN chart. And like I said before, you've got the what I think I know about blank, whatever topic you're looking at. Yes, I was right, this confirmed um, my thinking was confirmed. No, my thought is not confirmed. I actually don't think that anymore. And what's really important is that it asks children to include evidence that was used to change their thinking. Then you have a section for them to write down new information they learned. And lastly, again, super important, any additional questions and wonderings. Now, I invite you to check out um, a sample uh, student facing video that I've also created if you want to use that in um, your own classroom to see um, how you could present the RAN strategy to children uh, within one of the passport units. Thanks so much and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!